let's learn the basics of functions. Now I have a flash movie here and I've set the action script language to action script 3 but the basics of functions are very similar as action script 2 as to action script 3. So I'm going to open the actions window and we're going to talk about functions. Now we're going to need functions in our games for different routines that we're going to want to run. So for instance when we start our game we might want to call an initialize function and this would call an initialize function if we had one and so the first thing we want to do maybe is run our initialize function and basically start our game and set the score to zero and set the player to the center of the screen and all that and maybe we want a create hero function that we're going to need to call when we create the hero and then when the game is over maybe we call a game over function and so when we call the function there's going to be a routine of things basically that take place that clean up the game or initialize the game or create the hero and set him on the stage and give him his properties so we're going to need to create these functions which are going to be like little routines they're basically reusable blocks of code that we're going to need to create so these lines call the function but we haven't actually created the functions or written the functions. We've called initialize and create hero and game over, but this is going to result in an error because we haven't actually written these functions yet. So let's show how to create a function, not just call it. So I'm going to erase these and we'll start with this initialize function that we're calling here. Now oftentimes in games this will be shortened to just in it, right? So this will start your game, right? Or even be, be used to reset the game. So this is the calling of the function, but to write the function, what we need to do is we type the word function, keyword, notice it turns purple, and then we give it the name. In this case, it's in it, right? That's the name of our function. And then open and close parentheses, and then an open curly brace, and then a closed curly brace. Now, in action script 3, this is the basic structure of a function. This is the function, right? Its name, these are where the parameters go, and then in between the curly braces is the code that gets executed. Now with action script 3, we also usually tell the function what data type will be returned. And unless you're returning data type explicitly, at the end of this in it and then open and close parentheses you'll see a colon and the word void. So that is the typical structure of a function in action script 3. So this creates the init function and this calls the function. So the function is created here and the function is called here. Now, when you call the function and you type in it, open and close parentheses and semicolon, whatever exists in between the curly braces will get executed. So right now, if I hit control enter, you'll see nothing gets sent to the output window. We don't have anything. But as soon as I put in, let's say, a trace statement in here, now when I call the function in it, this trace statement will get traced to the output window and the string hello will show up in the output window. So we hit control enter and you can see there's the word hello in the output window up here. And once again if I get rid of this in it, we have a function, but you'll see there's no output because we haven't called it. We've created the function in it and inside we're tracing the word or the string hello, but we haven't called it. Now the useful thing about functions is, is once you write a function that has a routine of things that you want it to do, like in this case just trace a statement, you can call this function many times. So in other words, I can say init to call it, but then if I wanted to, I could just call it as many times as I need it. So copy and then paste, and then if I'm going to do it again, I'll call it again, and if I need to do it again, I'll call it again, and now you'll see that the hello string is output four times. So that's nice because then this function is reusable block of code. And this could be useful. Let's say our game, we need to spawn enemies. We need to create the bad guys or 
we need to create ships and they need to happen over and over again, then we can just call the function multiple times. Let's see if we can expand the usefulness of this init function by instead of tracing a message inside of the function, passing the message through the function using the parameters area in between the two parentheses. Also we can call this the parameters or arguments area. So what we want to do is we want to pass the message through this area. So what we'll say is we'll say the message right here and we'll make it a string and we're saying okay now this function in it should receive a basically a string into the function right so now and then in the trace statement we'll just trace that parameter right so we're going to trace the message so it's like a variable loaded into the function and now when we call our function all we have to do is put the message we can say hello how are you and now we can just pass these messages notice it's expecting a string so we're going to need to pass it a string and not a number so now the messages get transferred when we call the function and we pass it right into the function through this parameter. We'll hit control enter and you can see there are all the messages up here in the output window. Now this whole function and this whole flash movie is done in ActionScript 3 and this is the structure of the function in ActionScript 3. If I go to file publish settings you'll see that under flash swift there's the scripting language ActionScript 3. Now if I change this to ActionScript 2 and click OK then all I need to do is get rid of this colon void here. I'm just going to get rid of that and so then there's no data type at the end here and now if I hit control enter you can see it works fine and we get the output so that's the difference. Now I can also take this back to ActionScript 3. Let's see here and see if it still works and click OK without the colon void and hit control enter and you can see that it also works. It's just the proper structure and proper format in ActionScript 3 to provide the data type at the end that will be returned. And in this case it's void because we're not returning the information from the function or the data or a value from the function we're just tracing the message to the output window but if we were going to use a return statement it would look something like this first of all we would have to decide what data type do we want to return and so in this case maybe a a string right and so then we're returning a string and then instead of tracing the message what you would do is you would say return and then maybe the message and then the message the string will be returned to the function that called it so now in, in this case the function that called in it now this is not going to be useful in this situation because we're just calling in it on the main timeline nothing has called in it for us but if you wanted to what you could do is you could say well I'm going to trace and inside of my trace statement I want to call the init function so now we're saying I'm going to issue a trace command and in my trace command or my trace function I'm going to call another function and I need to return the value from that and then trace it to the output window so in this case if I hit control enter you can see hello is output to the window because it was returned by the init function. Now that gets a little more complex and so that's why right now at this point since we're not calling um, the function or returning a value from another function calling another function we just put void and instead of using a return we're just at the moment just simply tracing the message but that is how you would do it so now 
in it and we pass the parameter the string hello to the init function and we're not returning anything so the void goes here and then it takes the message and passes it to the interior of the function and then it's passed inside the function and then the function is executed and the message is then traced and so we get the output.